the final day of October has arrived. If history is any indicator, the hunting should be good. On the morning of Halloween, Mike Reed is back on stand in his local urban zone, hoping to catch a buck out cruising looking for a hot doe. Chase and I are set up in the urban zone with uh, Halloween tonight. I wanted to stay close to the house. We're gonna, we're gonna hang out with the kids and do some activities this afternoon. I finished getting the corn out at my home farm. Still no Ali on that farm, so my plan is to head down to the river farm for the next few days. I took Monday and Tuesday off of work, so I have a little stint where I can spend some time down there that farm's about an hour and a half from my house, so it's uh, not a place that I can easily just run over and hunt like my home farm is. There's generally, you know, plenty of mature bucks to choose from in this area just because there's not a lot of hunting. There's plenty of scrapes and we got the corn still standing, lots of thick cover, so anything can happen. We've had one small buck come by. I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy the morning. With does surrounding his tree, Mike anxiously waits for a buck to show. 100 miles to the east, team member Kane Gillette is also on stand, taking advantage of the great weather conditions. Good morning, guys. It is the, uh, it is Halloween morning, 1031 here in Northern Illinois. We got a cool high 20s, low 30s morning uh, with an east wind hitting us in, in the face right now. And I'm gonna make this quick. We're sitting over this big CRP field. We got a new stand on this creek bottom here and neither Shredder or maybe Mountain Dew. One of my shooters is right here about a hundred yards working to us. He just popped out right here, you see him? I can see the top of his back. He's he's in the tall grass. Good more coming towards us. Right there, Sam. Yeah, dude, that's that mountain dew buck, I think.
Back, back. Good morning. To, to call that deer in like that, I mean, he came in on a string right here and gave me a perfect 20 yard shot. Um, but anyway, that's the deer I call Mountain Dew. We haven't really talked about it on the show. It's a five and a half year old deer. Give me your thoughts in the comment, but I don't, I, I don't know. I haven't really, well, I haven't watched it back yet, but I don't think that deer ducked. I, he jumped the string, wouldn't you agree? I mean, he jumped it and, you know, that, that's the terrible part about this. I, you know, I wish this was a clean celebration of a harvest, but um, you know, we're not out of the woodworks yet because he jumped that string, as you guys saw, I hit him low. Um, and Brad and I watched him. The nice thing about this stand is we can cover a lot of ground. We've watched him work this CRP field real slow. And unfortunately, he's, uh, man, as bow hunters, we want to come in here and do this as ethical and as cleanly as possible on a harvest. So it just kills you to do it, to, to have it happen like that. Man, I hope we get on that deer, man. Ah, that was awesome. All right, so we're gonna get out of here quiet and uh, you know, we'll definitely update you along this way. I think we got a, a, a long road ahead of us today. Well, we've gone about 150 yards now from where we thought the steer bedded, but it turned out he did not bed. Um, he hasn't bedded yet, but we've had good blood, so uh, we just got permission from my neighbor here to the east to go onto his property and uh, the, the blood, we can see the blood on the other side of the fence. So um, we're going to push through now that we got permission and hopefully he's not much further. seven hours since I shot him. Man, that's such a bittersweet feeling. He's done right here. I guess let's go see him, but man. Oh man. Let's go, buddy. You know, I've replayed that shot, that scenario in my head over and over again. And there, there really honestly is nothing I would do different about that. Um, you know, this buck came in on a string um, right to 20 yards, gave me the broadside shot that we all dream of. And, you know, it, it was just completely unforeseen that he was gonna jump like that in that moment um, and, and spin. I've never had a deer pinwheel that hard like that, but, uh, you know, fortunate, I was, I was very fortunate to be able to recover this deer. Luckily in Illinois here, we're able to draw a second either sex tag that we can use on a buck. So um, I'll definitely still be participating in some of these good days of the rut. Plans going forward though, like I said, we'll be uh, trying to get Brad on a buck. I'll be out still and we're gonna get Emma on a deer. So looking forward to that and hopefully we can still uh, get into some more deer and have a good November. There's lots of deer left on the farm. Happy to uh, happy to put my tag around him on, on Halloween this year. and and looking forward to see what the rest of the season's got in store for us.
Mike's morning finishes without any further action. Staying true to his plan to remain close to home, he decides to spend the rest of the day deploying a new cutty link system across the home farm. His goal is to find back the impressive buck with the drop tie, one he's named Ali. Just like that, October is finally over. Before we flip the calendar page though, reflection on the past 31 days is a must. It was a legendary stretch of hunting for the team, filled with success thanks in part to our preparation, timely weather fronts, and of course, luck. Lots of luck. Dowdy's in full belt. <laughs> Let's talk about the October lull. Oh, I love October cold fronts, they're just nothing better. I'm at a loss for words, I can't. Even... I've been waiting for that moment for so long. When I just shot, I think the biggest buck of my life. I think he had a little drop too. That is insane. Oh, he was coming out while I was doing it. Look at that. And he's down right there. Dude, you smacked him. <laughs> I really thank God for the great country that we live in. Did you get one? Yes, I shot a big one, Dad. Yes, he we had a pretty memorable hunt on this farm last year. This is probably right up there with one of the one of the craziest ones we've had. I don't live to see no member, but man, I don't need to chase it this year. Oh well, baby. <laughs> no place like it. But that's the deer I really wanted. Happy to uh, happy to put my tag around him on on Halloween this year, and and looking forward to see what the rest of the season's got in store for us. With many tags filled, we look ahead to the main event and can only hope that the next few weeks live up to the hype. November is finally here. To kick off the new month, Lee Abraham is back on the same clover plot he encountered GQ two days prior. With a different wind, he chooses a stand location overlooking the cuttyback camera the buck has been on multiple occasions. November has arrived. It came with a uh, nice northwest cold front. We are bundled up here by the same spot we were last night. I think this is one of those kind of all day activity days where they're going to hopefully be cruising around all day long. We hope he comes by here, checks a couple of scrapes, checks the, these rubbing posts, checks these, these doe bedding areas, and just cruising through. Um, I don't know that we could be in a, you know, a more centralized spot for him. It's just a matter of where he, whether he comes by. I think this is probably our camp outside for the next uh, day and a half uh, with the same winds and the same, uh, unless, unless our cameras tell us something different. In the meantime, uh, we're gonna keep our eyes up, keep our hands in our pockets, stay warm, and uh, hopefully we'll have some good news for you soon. Lee's great run of encounters continues, and another mature buck lumbers his way by in the daylight hours. A six and a half year old homebody who frequents the scrape tree. Now, GQ just needs to make an appearance.
140 miles to the east, Mike is set up in one of the best stand locations the river farm has to offer, the Skinny Pinch. Sweet November is finally here. Chase and I are set up down at the River Bottom Farm. We're back in the skinny pinch. Looking for a merino, our DAC. We have an awesome cold front, high pressure front blowing through. Brisk north, northwest winds, about 21, 22 miles an hour. We had a, a nice young 10 pointer walk by us as we we're setting up. Never saw us, we 10 yards from Chase on the ground. And then shortly after setting up, we had a, a Crab Claw 10 come under us on the same trail at 10 yards. It's really cool to see that deer. He was a beautiful three-year-old last year. We found his match set the same day we found Dak's match set. He put on quite a few inches and he looks really, really good as a four-year-old this year. He's one that we're really looking forward to trying to get to five and a half years old and see what he can become. We're one year from Jared's uh, chaotic rut hunt last year when he shot Andrew Luck. He was just a couple hundred yards away up the slough at the head of the slough last year. We had snow on the ground last year this time, but they start now great. Really looking forward to the sit. about 11 o'clock and uh, we've had a pretty good sit. It seemed four cruising bucks. All of them were young except the Crab Claw 10. Um, it is windy, windy, windy. I'm getting kind of tired of being in the wind and I've got a little bit of work to do. So we're gonna jump down, uh, get a little bit of work done and then probably come back to this tree for the afternoon sit. The wind's supposed to die down around 2.30 or 3. Back on the small clover plot, Lee's hunt stalls. Midday, Lee decides to change stands, heading up the hill to a redneck blind that is great for observation, and GQ is on his feet. Walking by a camera at the opposite end of the long bead field trailing a doe, he barely stays out of the line of sight of Lee's location. Alright, sweet November. Uh, first hunt for me. Took the morning off. Uh, spent some time with family this morning. Cody and I are out now. I think we're going to go after this big 10. 
into hanging on some really small trees down this bottom but it's gonna be interesting because it's real windy right now and these trees are super small they're so small we're gonna be in two separate trees so it'll be interesting but uh, I think it's the spot we need to be in so I'm gonna pull, go pull this card and come back and adjust the game plan if necessary There's encounter number four for the season. And he was probably, I don't know, at the closest point, 50 to 60 yards. And he came out of the section exactly where I wanted him to. I didn't. And he couldn't have drawn it up any better except for the fact we had three does come out first. And there's actually a couple different bucks behind them. But these does came out and came underneath our tree. And one got through okay, and the second one picked up, I think, a little bit of our ground scent from when we were at the base of the tree. I mean, we're, we're so low to the ground. To give you an idea how low we are, Cody handed me the tree stands to hang. But those doughs started blowing, and obviously the blowing didn't affect much because he came within minutes after that. But when they left, before we saw him, they went to the north. And I think he was so focused on them that I tried calling to him. We'll see, we know he's close. And it's still early, we still have a lot of daylight left. Just keep our fingers and give us an opportunity. While Jared waits for the Big Ten to reappear, 35 miles to the southwest, Mike is back on the river farm. 
returning to the same stand he hunted in the morning. buck. I thought he was five and a half last year. Um, I actually encountered him last year a couple of times, but one that sticks out in my memory is November 2nd, the night I had a uh, past Prodigy. He and Prodigy kind of postured to one another, and then he walked off and Prodigy came in to 30, 35 yards. We just got his picture back in the peninsula on our Cuddy Link system October 17th. I think that was the first picture we had of him this year. And uh, here he comes, comes strolling by. He's a six by five, he's got a broken brow. And uh, last year he had a bunch of kickers off of the, one of his bases, two or three of them. Anyway, not a deer I'm wanting to target right now. It's about four o'clock, got a little over an hour left. Sweet November. 
What a great day in the woods. Snort wheezed right under us, came and licked the ladder. He was running that doe pretty hard. Her, her tongue was hanging out. He was panting the whole time he was right here. So, And then he just left her. Gotta keep looking, I guess. It's 4.50. So we got about 15 minutes left till sunset. So that, that probably gives us about uh, 35, 40 more minutes for Dacre Marino to come by. It seems like we're seeing every other deer. Plans going forward though, like I said, we'll be uh, trying to get Brad on a buck. I'll be out still and hopefully we can still uh, get into some more deer and have a good November. There's lots of deer left on the farm. That's just crazy. How many times can we be in the game and not get a shot off? I think uh, I think it was all over if the second doe didn't get caught up, if she would have went through like the first doe did. The chase continues and uh, we'll stay after. Sweet November. What a great day in the woods. We got about 15 minutes left till sunset, so that, that probably gives us about uh, 35, 40 more minutes for Dacre Marino to come by. Seems like we're seeing every other deer. More often than not, the first day of November doesn't meet our greedy expectations, but it's only the beginning of the journey. Lee Abraham is one bend in the tree line from encountering the giant buck for a second time, and Jared Mills again nearly gets a shot off at his nemesis. Mike Reed didn't encounter a shooter, but the tight rack 6x5 put on a show, stomping and wheezing through the crunching leaves, putting the stamp of approval that the best month of the year has finally arrived. It is the time we put all of our schemes into action. This is when we find out if all the days of sweat equity, long nights studying the map, and months of dreaming will actually pay off. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. We are finally chasing November. <laughs>